The U.S. is planning to provide Ukraine with cluster munitions to help it in the war with Russia, U.S. officials told Reuters on Thursday. The move, if confirmed, would provide a powerful new element to Kiev's counteroffensive, but it has already drawn opposition from human rights groups who say the weapon kills indiscriminately. The White House said sending cluster munitions to Ukraine is, quote, under active consideration, but it had no announcement to make. President Joe Biden is due to attend a NATO summit in Lithuania next week, with the conflict likely to dominate discussions. Ahead of the gathering, Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky has been drumming up support for his country's bid to become a member of the Defense Alliance. He used a trip to the Czech Republic on Thursday to urge NATO countries to stand up to Russia. Some people still look back at Moscow. Some people are afraid of Russia. Although I believe that this is a great moment, a great chance to show the courage of the entire alliance and the strength of the alliance, but nevertheless, we are talking about a clear signal, some concrete things in the direction of an invitation. We need this motivation. We need honesty in our relations. Zelensky's plea received support from Czech President Patel Pavel. Here it should be made absolutely clear that it is in the interest of the Czech Republic that Ukraine, as soon as the war is over, should start negotiations on joining NATO, because it is also in the interest of our security, regional stability, and economic prosperity. Ukraine wants to join NATO as quickly as possible, but member states have been divided over how fast that step should be taken. Some are worried the move will take the alliance closer to an active war with Russia. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Ukrainian city of Lviv remains devastated after a Russian missile hit a residential building there, killing at least seven people. Officials said much of the rubble left by Thursday's attack had been cleared. Since Russia's invasion in February last year, thousands have fled to Lviv, a city far from the front lines. Ukrainian officials slammed the attack, while Moscow claimed it targeted troop bases, not civilians. And I don't know anybody who likes being viewed as having been played for a sucker. U.S. President Joe Biden on Friday sought to connect with Americans who'd been hit with surprise medical bills, sometimes amounting to hundreds or thousands of dollars. At a White House event, Biden announced new steps to crack down on so-called junk fees and lower health care costs associated with what he called short-term medical plans, which he said in some cases stretched out for years without providing proper coverage. Under our rule, short-term plans would have to be short-term. That means four months or less, not three years. Insurance companies would also be required to provide a clear disclaimer up front about what's covered and what is not covered instead of burying it in fine print. Second, we're cracking down on surprise medical bills, which I thought we had made some progress on. The Obama administration in 2016 limited short-term insurance plans to three months to try to get more people on year-round plans. But regulations adopted by the Trump administration in 2018 allowed people to stay on such plans for 12 months and renew them for three years. The White House said those plans were hurting Americans with hefty surprise bills. In America, it sounds corny, but fairness is something we kind of expect. Biden, who has watched his public approval rating sag under the weight of voters' anxiety about inflation and the economy's direction, has made it a priority to fight hidden fees of all types, from travel to ticket sellers. A man who pleaded guilty to murdering 23 people and wounding 22 others in a racist attack at an El Paso Walmart was sentenced to 90 consecutive life terms in prison by a federal judge on Friday. Prosecutors said that in 2019, Patrick Crucius drove 600 miles from a Dallas suburb to the city on the U.S.-Mexico border and opened fire with an AK-47 style rifle loaded with hollow point ammunition. He targeted people he believed were Hispanic, fueled by white supremacist beliefs. Before the massacre, Crucius posted on the internet a manifesto that declared, quote, this attack is a response to the Hispanic invasion of Texas. They are the instigators, not me. I am simply defending my country from cultural and ethnic replacement brought on by the invasion. 
similar ideas appear to have propelled other attacks, targeting Jews at a Pittsburgh synagogue and a Buffalo supermarket targeting African Americans. Crucius did not speak in court Friday. The sentencing followed two days of emotional testimony from witnesses. He reached a deal with prosecutors to plead guilty to avoid the death penalty. Crucius still faces Texas state charges that could result in his execution.